Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we're making a modern mock neck top. For this delight, the vibes are modern casual using a stitch combination we're fond of for a poofy top and a new combo for the waist stitch to tie it all together, a classy mock neck. Speaking of, if you're looking for our mock neck tops or maybe a turtleneck to your thing, you are in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns, including both mock and turtleneck, with more dropping weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 4 yarn will work, but I used a total of 310 grams of yarn, and that's 690 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 5 and 6 millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us how many projects you have going on right now. Thankfully, due to the channel, I never have more than one project in the works at a time, so just one for me. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. and a treble crochet. This tutorial is made for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're all going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Then we're all going to grab our 6 millimeter hook and start by making an even number chain that reaches from the top of your shoulder down to our waist. I need roughly 15 inches or 38 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 56. Now that we have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is going to be a single crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain 1. That chain 1 does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Now into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, insert with a single crochet. So insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Again, into that following chain, insert, pull through, pull through two, and continue with one single crochet into every chain, and we should end up with the same amount of stitches as chains that we made. So for me, a total of 56. Alright, so everyone's row one should be complete. Now our row sequence for this piece is going to be a single crochet row, and then two mosh stitch rows following that, and then repeat. So since we just did our single crochet row, so let's get started on our moss stitch row. So getting started for every moss stitch row, we're always going to chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as a chain, and that's going to make more sense in a second. Now we're going to flip our work. And all we're going to do is skip that first stitch, and then into that following, insert with a single crochet, forming a kind of netting, and that gives us our first chain space, and single crochet, so for everyone so far, we should have a total of two stitches, which is, like I said, that chain space and single crochet. And we're just going to continue this, making our way all the way down. So again, chain one, skip a stitch, and into the following with a single crochet. Now, all together, we should have one, two, three, four stitches for our row two. Let's do one more set together. Let's chain one, skip a stitch, and into that following stitch with a single crochet. Now we should all have a total of one, which is our first chain space, two, three, four, five, six stitches. From here, we're just gonna continue to chain one, skip a stitch and single crochet into the next, making our way all the way to the end of the row. All right, so we are back. Our second row or our first moss stitch row is complete. Now, just as a really quick tip, our second row should have the same amount of stitches as our previous row since we aren't doing any increases or decreases. And lastly, for this pattern, whenever I reference a set, the set is going to be a chain space and single crochet. So just to show you guys, this is my first chain space right here, and then my following single crochet. So I would count this as a set. 
So when it comes to this moss stitch portion, the amount of sets that we have should be half the amount of chains that we made when we got started on our piece. So as an example, since I had a total of 56 chains, counting my chain space and single crochet as one set, I should have a total of 18 sets. Now for your piece, the amount of sets that you should have should be half the amount of chains that you made when we got started on this row. Now getting started on our row three, we're going to do another moss stitch row. So getting started on our moss stitch row, like I said, we're going to chain two. That first chain is gonna count as our turning chain. That second chain is gonna count as a chain and flip our work. Now what we're going to do from here is pretty much the same thing that we did for the previous row. We're going to skip that first stitch, which is a single crochet from our previous row and then single crochet into the next, which should be a chain space. So we're gonna skip one into the next, single crochet, and all together we should have our first set, which is our chain space and single crochet. So a total of two stitches so far for this row. Again, we're going to chain one, skip a stitch, and then into that following, which should be a chain space, a single crochet. And we are going to continue this, making our way all the way down. We should end up with the same amount of stitches as we had from the previous row, with the same amount of sets as our previous row as well. And I'll meet you back at the end of this row. Now we are back, our row three is nearly finished. I just wanted to meet you back to show you that that last stitch could look a little collapsed, resulting in us skipping it. So we just wanna make sure that we are ending with the same amount of sets as our previous row. And if it looks like this is our last single crochet, just make sure that you are pulling it apart because we should all have a single crochet and a chain space left. Now that chain space can collapse in on itself, but it will be there just to make sure that everyone ends on the same amount of stitches as our previous row. So I'm just gonna chain one, making sure I'm working into that last chain space with a single crochet, and that's it. From here, we're gonna continue to repeat our three previous rows. So just to get started on our single crochet row, which should be our row four, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch and chain space to reach the end of the row. Then our following two rows are going to be moss stitch rows, and we're just gonna continue to repeat those three rows until we have a shoulder portion that can reach from two inches past our shoulder all the way over to the base of our neck. And we do wanna make sure that we're ending right at the base of our neck because this is going to have a mock neck and we don't want that to scrunch up once we go in with our slip stitch collar. I will meet you back right after our second moss stitch row, and then we can work in with our neckline from there. I am back and my shoulder portion is complete. I have a total of 30 rows and my width is roughly seven inches or 18 centimeters. Now from here, we're all going to get started on our neckline. So what we're going to do, no matter what size we're making, is we're all going to insert our stitch marker into the sixth stitch from the top and the top is going to be the opposite from our working yarn. And then from here, we're going to do the following row in our row sequence. So we should have all just finished our second moss stitch row. So since we're all on the bottom, we're all going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one single crochet into every stitch until we are worked into the stitch right before our stitch marker. So we are back. We have just finished up our first neckline row, which is just one single crochet into every stitch until our stitch marker is reached. Now a quick tip for this row, we should end on an even number of stitches, and it should all be basically the same amount of stitches that we had for the shoulder minus six stitches, because we took away six for the neckline. Then from here, all we're going to do is continue to repeat our three previous rows that we did for the shoulder. So after the single crochet row, we're going to do a moss stitch row. At the end of that row, chain two, flip our work, do our moss stitch row all the way back up, then continue to repeat those three rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we are worked from the side of the base of our neck, across our chest to the other side of the base of our neck. And I will meet you back right after a single crochet row that ends along the top so that we can work straight into the shoulder portion from there. But just as a really quick tip, this neckline portion isn't gonna have any increases or decreases. And as for the sizing, we wanna make sure that we're not making this neckline too wide because we would like for this to be a mock neck. If it's too wide and then we try to cinch it up with the mock neck, it may start to buckle along the neckline. So try to make this as close to the neckline as possible. But either way, I'll meet you guys back right after that single crochet row. All right, so I am back. I have just finished up my neckline portion I now have a total of 55 rows and my width is now 14 inches or 36 centimeters. And now we're all going to get started on our following shoulder portion, which is gonna be done pretty much the same way as the first one. The first shoulder row is just going to be a little bit different, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. Since we all should have ended along the top, we are all going to start by making a chain six. 
Now that is going to be a chain six for everyone since we all should have skipped a total of six stitches on this side. So we are back. We have just made our chain six and now we're gonna get started on our falling row in our row sequence, which should be a moss stitch row. So after our chain six, we are going to block off that last chain and we're going to do a chain two. That first chain is gonna count as our turning chain. That second chain is going to count as our chain. And then from here, we're going to single crochet into the fourth chain from our hook. So here's one, two, three is that chain that we blocked off, and then four. So into that fourth chain, go ahead and bring your hook down and insert into there with a single crochet. So insert, pull through, pull through two, we should all have our first chain space and single crochet. And then from here, we're going to finish off our row per usual. So chain one, skip a chain, and then into the following with a single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue on with our moss stitch row all the way down. At the end of the row, we're going to chain two, flip our work, do our following moss stitch row because we are still following the same three row repeat. And then the row after that is going to be a single crochet row. Now from here, we're just gonna continue to repeat these three rows with no increases and no decreases until we have the same amount of rows as the first shoulder portion that we did. Once we have that, do a chain up a one and cut and then I will meet you back. Alrighty, so we are back and the entirety of our front panel is finished. Now I have a total of 85 rows and my width is roughly 21 inches or 54 centimeters. And now we're gonna get started on the back panel and the back panel is pretty simple, so I'm just going to talk you guys through it. So basically, all we're going to do for the back panel is we're going to make the same chain that we made when we got started on the front panel, then just continue on with our single and two moss stitch row repeat, working our way all the way across, so we will not have our neckline detail. We're going to want to make sure that we're repeating those three rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases for the same amount of rows that we have for the front panel, and then once we have the back panel all finished up, I'll meet you back so that we can seam everything together. So do not do a chain up of one and cut. Alrighty, so our front and our back panel are all complete. Now we're going to seam our shoulders. So let's all start by placing our back panel on top of our front panel. And then we're going to insert our hook into the top corner stitch of both the front and the back. Then all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Now all we're gonna do is put one single crochet into every side row working into both the front and the back panel at the same time. So let's all start by finding our first side row. This is mine right here. I'm gonna insert my hook in through there. Find the same side row within the back panel. This is mine right here. I'm going to insert into that top loop and I'm going to single crochet around everything. Let's do that again. This is my following side row within the front panel. I'm going to insert. This is my following side row within the back panel going to insert into that top loop and single crochet and that's it we're just going to continue doing this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into once we don't do a chain up of one and cut then repeat everything we just did here on the other side Alrighty, so we are back we have just finished up seaming our shoulders and now we're going to get started on the collar so first things first we're all going to need to make sure that our work is ripped right side out meaning all of the seams that we have are now along the inside then we're gonna be inserting our same six millimeter hook into any one of the side rows that we have along the top of our neckline. And then we're gonna start with a single crochet row. So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and start with a chain up of one. Then all we're gonna do from here is put one single crochet into every side row with one single crochet into every stitch once we reach the neckline. So let's get just the first few single crochets started. This is my following side row that I have right here. I'm gonna find that top loop, insert my hook, and if you'd like to weave in your tail ends like me, go ahead and place that tail end over your hook, and we're going to single crochet once. Let's do this again. This is my following side row, so I'm going to find that top loop, insert with another single crochet. And that's basically it, just one single crochet into every side row. Now once we reach the front panel, we are gonna have just a few stitches to work into, so put one single crochet into there, then across the front panel again, one single crochet into every side row. Make your way all the way around and then slip stitch into that chain space. Now a really quick tip, this single crochet row that we're doing is going to be as wide as this neckline can stretch. So once when the single crochet row is finished, go ahead and place this over your head just to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. Now if it's a little bit too tight, redo some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, redo some stitches with a tighter grip. Alrighty, so we are back and our single crochet row for our neckline is complete. 
Now we're all going to make a chain the length that we'd like for our mock neck to be. Now you can make this as long or as short as you'd like. So I'm going to start by making a chain 8 and that's roughly 2 inches or 5 centimeters. So now that we have our chain, we're all going to do our slip stitch row. So we're all going to start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain 1. That chain 1 does not count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off with a second chain from our hook, we're all going to insert with a slip stitch. So into that chain, we're going to bring our hook down into there. Then when we have those two loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over and pull through both of those loops. There's our first slip stitch. Let's do this again. Into our following chain, insert, then yarn over and gently pull through both loops on our hook. And then just once more into that following chain, insert your hook, then yarn over and pull through. And that's it. We're going to continue with one slip stitch into every chain, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row can be a little too tight to work into. Now we've just put one slip stitch into every chain. We're now going to slip stitch it into the base. So how we're going to do that is just find the next available stitch into the base, insert your hook into there with a slip stitch, pull all the way through. Now that slip stitch into the base doesn't actually count as a stitch, that's just to connect it. Then to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Also does not count as a stitch, that's just to work our way up. Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We want to make sure that we're not working into any of those stitches into the base. We're all going to find the last slip stitch from our previous row. Insert in through that back loop and again yarn over and gently pull through everything on our hook. Again, find that following stitch from our previous row, insert into that back loop and gently pull through everything and continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, we're all going to chain one, flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again and I'll meet you back at the base so we can connect it together once more. We now have one, two, three rows nearly complete and now we're just going to connect our third row into the base. So just like how we did the first row, find that following stitch into the base, insert into there with a slip stitch, then into that following stitch into the base, insert pull through to work our way to the following row none of the slip stitches count as a stitch flip our work and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch and that is it from here we're just continuing to repeat these two previous rows with absolutely no increases and no decreases making our way all the way around when we don't have any more stitches left to work into i will meet you back so we can seam everything together so we are back we have made our way all the way around with our back loop slip stitch rows we don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it together by doing an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're all going to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out, meaning the seams that we did for the shoulders is still along the inside. And then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Now we're going to do our first seam. So we're going to start by finding that first stitch into the front panel and inserting only in through that front loop and then into the back panel, finding that next available stitch and inserting only in through that back loop. Once we have those three loops on our hook, we're all going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And that is our first outside loop slip stitch seam. We're gonna do this again. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert only in through that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert only in through that back loop. When we have those three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three and that's it we're going to continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into when we don't do a chain up of one and cut all right so our collar is all seamed up now we're going to seam up our sides so first things first we're going to make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out now meaning the shoulder seam that we did is now along the outside then we're all going to insert our stitch marker into any stitch from the top the width that we'd like for our armhole to be now this is going to be completely up to you. If you would like a wider armhole, place your stitch marker lower, or if you would like a more narrow armhole, insert your stitch marker higher. I wanted mine to be a comfy size armhole, so I inserted my stitch marker into the 25th stitch from the top, and that's roughly six inches or 15 centimeters. Then from there, we're gonna be inserting our hook into the bottom corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Now this is going to be a single crochet seam, so pretty much the same way that we did the shoulders. So we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into both the front and back panel at the same time. 
So just to do the first one, find that first stitch into the front panel, insert, first stitch into the back panel, insert, and single crochet around everything. And that's it. We're going to continue doing this until you reach our stitch marker. When we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat on the other side. Everything is all seamed up, and now we're ready to get started on the bottom portion of our top. So first things first, we're now going to make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of the seams that we did, so the side and the shoulder, is now along the inside. And then we're going to be inserting our 5 millimeter hook now into any one of the side rows along the bottom of our piece. And then from here, we're all going to start with a single crochet row, skipping every other side row to get this to cinch. So we are going to insert our yarn onto our hook, do a chain up of one to secure it, and now we're going to do our first single crochet. So we're all going to insert our hook into the first side seam that we see right here, and this is mine. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. We are going to skip our following side row, and then into the side row right after that. Another single crochet. Let's do this again. We're going to skip our following side row, and then into that following side row, insert into that top loop, and that's basically it. We're just going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around. Now once we don't have any more side rows left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space. And then once we slip stitch into that chain space, make sure that we are trying our piece on to make sure that everything fits nicely. Now just like the collar, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once when this row is complete, try your piece on to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. If it's a little too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. Alrighty, so our single crochet row along the bottom of our piece is all finished. Once we have that, we are now going to get started on the length of the bottom that we'd like for the bottom portion to be. So you can make this as long or as short as we'd like. I'd like for my top to be full length, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 35, and that's roughly 8 inches or 20 centimeters, keeping in mind that it's still with our 5 millimeter hook. So now that we all have our chain, we're going to get started on our first row, which is a treble crochet row. So what we're going to do is block off that last chain and start with a chain 3. There's 1, there's 2, there's 3. Now that chain 3 does not count as a stitch, that is our turning chain. And now we're going to yarn over twice to prepare for a treble crochet. So yarn over once, yarn over twice. And into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook, we're going to do our first treble crochet. So bring your hook down, into that chain that we blocked off, we're going to insert, yarn over, and pull through. Then from here we should all have one, two, three, four loops on our hook. Then we're all just going to yarn over and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through the first two for three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through the next two for two loops on our hook. Then yarn over, pull through the last two for one loop on our hook. And that is our first treble crochet finished. Let's do this again. We're all going to yarn over twice, and then insert our hook into that following chain. Now that we're here, we're all going to yarn over, pull through, then yarn over, and pull through two until we have one loop left on our hook. So yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our second treble crochet. We're going to continue with one treble crochet into every chain until we reach the end of the row. Alrighty, so we are back. We have made our way all the way down with our treble crochet row. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to connect it into the base. But because the bottom portion that we're going to do is going to have some ribbing, we're going to want to make sure that we're all inserting our hook in the correct direction. So first things first, we're going to make sure the work is still flipped right side out, meaning the seams that we did for the shoulder and the sides is still along the inside. And then making sure that our work is underneath us, we're going to be working clockwise or to the left. And how we're going to connect it into the base is start by counting out the next three available stitches into the base. So here's one, here's two, here's three. Into that third stitch we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close off our row number one. And now that our row number one is complete, our following row is going to be a slip stitch row. So just to work our way up to the following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. Remembering that none of those slip stitches into the base count as an actual stitch, and we're going to flip our work. Then from here, we're all going to be putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. 
So finding the last stitch from our previous row, not into those slip stitches, into the base, we're going to insert into that back loop. Then yarn over, pull through everything. Again, into that next stitch's back loop. Insert, pull through everything, and we're going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, remembering not to tug too tightly after every stitch. Now, at the end of this row, we should have the same amount of stitches as our previous row, since we aren't doing any increases or decreases. At the end of this row, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again, and then I'll meet you back at the base. All right, so we are back. We should all have one, two, three rows nearly finished. Now, at the end of our third row, we are going to be connecting it into the base. So what we're going to do is slip stitch into that same stitch that our previous row was worked into. So, as you guys can see, this is my next available stitch. We are not going to be working into there, we're going to be working into the stitch that our previous row is coming out of. So the stitch will be occupied. We're going to slip stitch into there. Now our row 3, or our second back loop slip stitch row, is complete. And just to work our way up to the following row, we're going to slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and then do a back loop slip stitch row. Now our third row in this 4 row repeat is going to be the only row that's connected into the base that same way because of the height of the row and because, like I said, we want enough stretch once one is finished. We are back. You should all have a total of 4 rows complete. So as a refresher, our first row was a treble crochet row. Our second row was a back loop slip stitch row. Our third row was a back loop slip stitch row. And then our fourth row was another back loop slip stitch row. Now for the bottom of our piece, it's going to be a repeat of our four previous rows. The only difference is that now our treble stitch row is going to be worked into the back loops just to keep up with the ribbing. So since we're about to get started on our row five, we're going to chain three, flip our work, and I'm just going to remind you that our following treble crochet row is worked into the back loops. So to do our treble crochet, per usual, we're all going to yarn over twice. We're all going to start by finding that first stitch from our previous row and insert only into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then just to do once more, yarn over twice, insert your hook into that following stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and that is it. Continue with one back loop treble crochet into every stitch. We are going to be connecting it into the base the same way that we did for our previous rows. And we're just going to continue to repeat this four row repeat with absolutely no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into. When we don't, I will meet you back so we can seam it all together. And just as a really quick tip, since we didn't have a certain amount of stitches into the single crochet row to work into, we may end with just one single crochet or two single crochet left in between. If that's the case, then just go ahead and do a single crochet row just to take up those two stitches because we don't want to miss out on those. Either way, I will meet you guys back. Alright, so we are back. We have made our way all the way around with our treble and three back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to work into, so now we're going to seam it all together. So first things first, this is going to be a single crochet seam, so let's flip our work wrong side out, meaning the seams that we have for the sides and the shoulders are now along the outside, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. Then we're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and since we already know how to do this seam, together we're just going to do the first one. So what we're all going to do is insert our hook into that first stitch into the front panel, then into the first stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet everything together. There we go. And that's it. This is the same seam that we did for the shoulder and the side, so just continue doing this, making our way all the way up. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so we are back and everything is all seamed up. The last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope y'all enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all the next one. Bye!